Gun laws in Britain are some of the strictest in the world, but a court case that ends this week has led some to argue that they are too strict. Paul Clark found a shotgun in his garden and handed it into his local police station. He says he thought he was doing the right thing. But gun possession is subject to harsh penalties and he now faces five years in jail, as David Fuller reports. It started, says Paul Clark, with what looked like a bag of rubbish dumped at the end of his garden. So I went and collected it, assuming it was rubbish, and as I took it inside, I opened it up and realised it was a gun. But it could end with him spending five years in jail for doing what he says was his civic duty, handing the shotgun in at his local police station. He was prosecuted, and a jury found him guilty of possession of a firearm. He's been advised not to discuss his case in detail until sentencing next week. At the hearing, his solicitor will ask the judge to quash the conviction. The message certainly being conveyed at the moment is that if you find a firearm, run away from it, throw it in a lake, and the last thing you do is take it to a police station. That could be the negative impact of these proceedings. Paul Clark has found himself on the wrong side of one of the most inflexible laws in the country. Brought in in 2003 to combat rising gun crime, gun possession is subject to strict liability. The law says that intention is not important. Carrying a gun means you should expect to go to jail for five years. At his trial, the judge said Mr Clark had no defence in law. The jury took just 20 minutes to find him guilty. His case is leading some to question the use of strict liability laws. On the internet, a campaign to overturn his conviction has attracted the support of the public and celebrities, as well as legal bloggers. This case illustrates beyond any doubt the potential for injustice. And I think Parliament really needs to consider most carefully, A, the use of strict liability in regulating conduct, but more particularly, should be very careful before prescribing that judges have to issue minimum sentences. The CPS and the police have told Channel 4 News that they do not dispute Mr Clark's explanation of how he found the gun, but they say he shouldn't have touched it. He should have left it where it was and called the police. The CPS considered it was in the public interest to prosecute Mr Clark as he was in possession of a sawn-off shotgun. He'd come into possession of the shotgun and two shotgun cartridges some days earlier and had not immediately contacted the police to make them aware of its existence. They accept he called the police the next day, telling them he had something to give them. But he only finally brought the gun in four days later. He was given the opportunity by the police to explain the full circumstances as to how he was in possession of the lethal weapon, but his explanation lacked credibility. That explanation for a four-day delay that may cost Paul Clark five years. Mr Clark's stepfather says he's shocked at what's happened. He shouldn't have been in that dock at all. And I would have thought the Crown had better things to spend their money on. The Home Office's guidance to police is to create an environment in which people hand in illegally held firearms. The outcome for Paul Clark next week may have a big impact on how likely people are to come forward and do just that.